Hi everyone, welcome again to our Wave Hill segment on birds of prey. Today's bird is a great horned owl. Uh, we're called a great horned owl. Great is in large in size. It's one of our larger North American owls. And a horned owl because of the tufts of feathers that he has on top of his head. For those of you who saw our segment on the screech owl, you'll remember that that bird had those same tufts of feathers. They're called horns, but they are of course just feathers that the bird can actually manipulate. He can move them, he can lay them down flat on his head and make them disappear or stick them straight up. They're one of the aspects of camouflage for the bird. Here's a bird of the, of the deep forest uh, with a lot of stripes and spots and markings and natural earth tones blended together for color camouflage. But also one of the concepts of camouflage is not only blending it in color, but looking like the background, being able to change your shape to adapt it or adjust it. And when he sticks those two feathers up, he wants them to look like twigs or tree branches or sticks. So it changes his profile. And if he, if he were sitting up in a tree and closed those brightly colored eyes, he really would truly look like a part of the tree at that point. People are always amazed because these birds are, are very common throughout the United States. They're found in all of our states from north, south, east, and west, and they even live in the middle of our cities. They're found right here on, on the Wave Hill property. So great horned owls are uh, found in a variety of habitats all around the United States, and they live quite commonly and quite frequently right here in the five boroughs of New York, believe it or not. Uh, their camouflage is so effective, and they've gotten so used to living around humans that uh, it's pretty much guaranteed walking around your neighborhood in a neighborhood park you've walked right by one of these birds in broad daylight and never realized it was there and he's making a little bit of a chittering noise because he's anticipating being fed uh, normally when we come out to do a program and he's being handled trained or flown during the day there's always a reward involved so he's anticipating that and he learns to anticipate even the sound of a sandwich bag crinkling in my pocket because that's where his food is. Now, what I'm going to feed him is one of the things that he would naturally eat in the wild, a small rodent. Again, if you watch one of our earlier segments, you heard me talking about how meat alone is an incomplete meal for the bird and they need natural whole foods, whether it be large prey or small prey. In the case of an owl like this that might catch something like a mouse in the wild, they eat it rather quickly. Most of the time they just swallow it whole. And again, it's a complete meal. They're getting something from every part of that meal. They're very efficient. They don't really waste anything. They get protein from the meat, calcium from the bones, vitamins and minerals from the internal organs, and even the fur serves a purpose. Whatever they can't digest, like the bone and the fur, becomes a pellet, which is a little ball that builds up in their stomach, and they'll cough it up the following day after a large meal, and that cleans out their system. And so I'm gonna feed them a mouse. So this is a little warning. If you don't want to see an owl eat a mouse, you might want to close your eyes or take a little break and come back in about 10 seconds because that's all it's going to take. It's not a live mouse, it's a dead mouse. It's in my right hand. I'm going to pick it up, hand it to the owl, and you're going to see just how an owl would eat a mouse in the wild. Just like that. Very efficient, very quick. And that was a real wild-caught deer mouse, and deer, my, mouse are, deer mice are primarily nocturnal. So that's one of the most common mice that an owl, a great horned owl, will actually eat in the wild. It's exactly what they would prey upon. And he, of course, would like another, but uh, he's going to get the rest of his dinner when we get home. One of the things I'd like to talk about is their ability to hear their prey. Uh, they're all known, of course, all birds of prey raptors are known for incredibly powerful eyesight. However, owls, their hearing is, is, is as important or more important in certain situations than their eyesight is. Because one of the misconceptions about owls is that they can see in the dark. Although they are nocturnal and they're most active by far at night, they can't truly see in total darkness. Their eyes are really effective and really efficient at seeing in low light or dim light. Moonlight, starlight, their eyes, you could say they work like a pair of night vision goggles. They're able to, they're able to collect tiny faint bits of light, magnify that light, lights up their field of view. So they see much better than we do. However, when it's truly dark, pitch black so to speak, on a moonless or a starless night, they still have to be able to locate their prey. They do that by sound. He hears a train going by, so he's checking that out. Any unusual sound will get his attention. The way it works 
is that no matter what owl you might be looking at, whether in real life or in a photograph, you'll notice that they have that rounded, flattened profile of their face. And I mentioned on one of the other segments, all the feathers around the eyes, those big circles of feathers, dish-shaped circles of feathers. Think of a satellite dish on the roof of a building to catch an incoming signal. Well, those discs or dishes of feathers on his face catch incoming sound. In other words, if he were sitting up in the top of a tree in the forest at night on a dark night, he'd be looking down, but also listening closely for the movement of the prey on the ground. Something like a mouse, for example, running around in the grass and the leaves. That tiny sound is gonna travel all the way up to that owl on a quiet night. Now, as that sound approaches his face, all of those feathers are designed to catch that sound and funnel it or direct it into his ears. Now, his ears are very large. They're as large or larger than his eyes, but you can't see them because they're hidden in all of those feathers, right on the side of the head where ours are. But while our ears point out symmetrically in the same direction, so to speak, his ears are asymmetrical. In other words, one ear points roughly toward the ground, the other ear points roughly toward the sky. So when that sound approaches his face and is funneled into his ears, he's gonna hear things different. He's gonna hear sound separation. Let's say, for example, if you were out in an open area and somebody yelled to you from 100 yards away, you'd hear the sound coming from that general direction. An owl would hear specifically where it was coming from. Because his ears are pointed in different locations, he hears that sound louder and clearer in one ear than the other. That gives him a direction. And by focusing on that direction, and making a funny side to side and up and down movement with his head, he's able to triangulate or pinpoint more specifically where the sound's coming from. And by flying a little closer to the sound and pinpointing it, he can fly down and catch that prey using sound alone, frankly, to catch the prey, sometimes without ever seeing it in the dark. So that's our great horned owl. Uh, thank you for joining us today and keep your eyes open for our next segment on our next bird of prey.